It was quite the surprise when a contractor working to build a school in Fort Bend ISD uncovered human remains that turned out to be the unmarked graves of 94 men and one woman. It has since been determined they were once part of the state-sanctioned convict leasing program that figured a way around the abolition of slavery by locking up black people, convicting them of often trumped up charges and forcing them to work. Dr. Charles Dupree is a superintendent of Fort Bend ISD and is here this morning to talk about that. Dr. Dupree, thank you for being here. Would you talk to me about how you were personally affected by the discovery of those bodies there on that site? Good morning, Camberell. Thank you for having me. I have to tell you, um, as an African-American male and leader in our community, this discovery, um, I'm just gonna be honest, it was overwhelming at first because, you know, like you, I've lived the bulk of my life um, dealing with issues of civil rights, leading in education and being an advocate for equity for all students, seeing the progress that has been made over time, um, even though we might have a linger, longer conversation about that on another occasion. Um, but to go back and have to revisit the reality that these individuals were enslaved after slavery had ended and what our state and our nation and local citizens had done to these individuals to the benefit uh, to their to benefit their business that it was overwhelming and very um, challenging to deal with and um, I yeah, I mean, I would, that's what I would say for now. I know you have other questions for me, but it was, it was, um, it was one of the most challenging things I've dealt with in my career. And as you dealt with that, what at that, pro at that point did you and the district try to do to make this horrific tragedy something that people could remember and learn from, as difficult and challenging as that might be? So, you know, I'm going to be honest, part of the, the criticism we've gotten is, is, you know, all this came to bear while we were building a building. And um, you've, you've probably read some of the things we've talked about on that. And initially, we really thought we were unable to leave the individuals in their graves. Um, everything we read in the state law indicated we needed to have them exhumed, that we needed to relocate them to a cemetery site. And that's what we were set to do. And um, that was hard enough because, you know, to, because the idea of, a, of removing individuals from their graves, disturbing their rest, and relocating them is, is a burden to bear for anyone. But to think of 95 individuals, our board um, invested hour after hour processing this, talking through every legal channel possible, trying to determine the best course of action to make sure that no matter what we did, we showed dignity and honor to these individuals each and every step of the way. Mm -hmm. So even the initial plans to exhume and re-enter them, we wanted the graves to be appropriate. We wanted them to be properly buried in caskets in a different cemetery nearby. So every step of the way, honoring them was at the forefront of our thinking. So now uh, on that site where they were, they still are, uh, Bullhead Camp Cemetery, uh, the memorial. Talk about what's there now and what plans you have in, uh, for going forward with this. Yes, so we did, uh, after about a year, um, because of some changes in the state law, we were able to actually lay them back to rest right where they came from. And I am very thankful for we were able to do that. Um, the building was not finished as planned. We left off a wing of the building to leave that cemetery intact, adjacent to that site. Um, it is now nicely fenced off. There are markers on each grave. And we had a beautiful ceremony um, as we opened the graves back in 2019 to return them to their graves. It was a beautiful evening ceremony with candlelights. And so I think we did a, we did a very good job of recognizing them and reinterring them um, in 2019. At this point, there's a lot of conversation still about the memorial. Our board is, in, is still having conversations with the county about a possible park and memorial area out there that we would do in tandem with the county and other community partners. So we're still looking for community partners, but there are some folks in the community that have stepped up and expressed interest, and I'm thankful for that. But there's a lot of ongoing conversations. But I think big picture, there'll be some type of community 
um, based Memorial Park and Memorial, whether it be a museum or a education center adjacent to the site. Um, the district is also looking at building and constructing, designing and constructing some type of monument mm -hmm. of memorial in the actual cemetery itself. So we have about a, a minute and a half left. The late Reginald Moore was very passionate about this. He was one who was saying that there are bodies here and throughout this time, he, he told everybody would listen that their bodies are there. Talk about his efforts and talk about the challenge of trying to get all the passionate voices, because there were a lot of passionate, very passionate voices about all of this, to try to get these interested parties all on the same page, or at least as close to the same page as possible. Well, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think we ever were successful in getting everybody on the same page. Out of everyone that was involved in this issue, Mr. Moore, Reginald Moore, he had a heart, he had a true burden for these individuals and he knew they were there for years and years. And so when we did uncover their graves, we worked with him initially to have some good rich conversations about planning toward the future. Unfortunately, a lot of outside voices, voices outside our own community got involved and as you're aware it was on the national media scene it was a lot of activists came into our community who are not part of our community and they had got loud and noisy around that but mr moore i know his heart was always pure he was always on focus and on point to do the right thing and the best thing for these individuals and we joined him in that even though we didn't always agree right. on every step of the way our board and our administration, we were dedicated to working with him in partnership. And his loss is significant. It's, right. it's, it's sad that he, he passed when he did. Right. Uh, he was not able to see this come to full closure. Um, but his efforts and his everything he put into this will always be remembered, will always be a part Dr. of the Sugar 95 story. Dr. Dupree, I want to talk to you uh, on another time about the new state, the state curriculum that's now, as a result of Sugarland 95, as a result of that, the state curriculum now has a more rich African-American studies part of that. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll, we'll have to pick that up at another time. Dr. Dupree, yes, thank you so much. Um, and we'll talk to you down the road. Thank you for your service, sir. Appreciate thank you. you.